like the power, but he loses it to Felipe in the Husky zone. Felipe up the sideboards there for Marshall. It's intercepted by from Kalman at center ice. But Kalman brings it back in the Husky zone. He fall on it at center ice. About five players fall on that puck with 17.49 remaining in the game. Colgate up 4-2. to two. And the Northeastern will change up now. They'll send out the big line of McDougal, Cowie, and Beetle. Colgate will stick with the LaPonte unit with Walsh and Gutsakis. LaPonte loses the draw. Huskies controlling their own end. Felipe to Frank now at center ice. Frank takes a long shot, goes wide of Lamone. Mitch McCowan behind his own net gets there first. McCowan controls it behind Guy Lamone. McCowan sends it up the sideboards for Walsh. Walsh will break out of the zone with LaPonte and Gutsakis. A long shot by Walsh is blocked by the defense at the blue line. The rebound to LaPonte, top of the circle. He's taken off the puck by McDougal. McDougal up the sideboard trying to clear the zone. Cowie now can't clear it. McCowan takes a shot, which is kicked out by Davinder. Walsh on the rebound, top of the circle. His shot is blocked. And here comes Northeastern out of the zone. Into the Colgate zone, skating in there is Beetle. He's taken off the puck by Rod Powell. Crease shot and the point scores! Frank wow. scored at Gila Rhodes, arguing that there was a man in the crease. But I don't think his arguments are going to beat any of the veil, Jim. The score is 4-3 to three Colgate. What a shot by Frank. He just sent one in, shoulder high. Lamont sticked it, and he was right in arguing. There was a man in the crease. Colgate's not going to win that argument. Colgate now, furious. Northeastern pulls within one as Larry Gutsakis has broken his stick in half on the ice. He's upset. <laughs> I guess they really felt they got the short end of that one. I don't know. Very tough. Uh, what a goal, though, by Frank. He He's really had a point shot. position from the left side. Set went buzzing and flying. Came in high on the morning, tried to cross it away, and it dumped in. Nonetheless, though, Colgate now down to a one-point lead with 17.07 left for third period. Well, this reminds me again, I hate to say it, of the Northeastern game of, of the February the 13th. And it was another Colgate tactic as they delay the game, fixing a portion of the ice. Trying to pick up themselves together now to keep that lead. They have a 4-3 lead. And this is a precarious position to be in in the third period. They're going to have to play a tight checking game now the rest of the way. 17.07 left in the game. The delay continues as they pick up the remains of a good soccer to stick. As the official announcement, the goal goes to Frank. One assist will go to Beetle. As back to live action, Northeastern controls the draw, sends it into the Colgate zone behind Lamar now. Up the sideboards. Walter Dubas breaks Colgate out, pass to Steve Smith, who dumps it into the Husky zone behind Davidner. Davidner sends it behind his net to the defenseman, but Fridgen flies in there to steal it. Steve Smith helps him out. Smith looks to center it back behind the net to Fridgen. He's tied up by Felipe, who loses his stick, and he'll kick the puck again up the sideboards for Mantrick. The puck is loose in the corner. They'll try to tie it up as Felipe looks for his stick. They finally get it out to the point, and Northeastern clears it all the way out to center ice where Chris Renault gets it for Colgate. Renault for Morris in his own end. Morris will dump it down into the Husky zone right on net. Davinder sticks it aside. Behind his net, Jacobs will send a pass into center ice as Busick breaks into the Colgate line. He's checked off the puck. Here comes Busick again. Shot goes wide, though. Dubas in the Colgate zone. Looks to break out Colgate. Dubas sends up the side bunch for Fridgen over the line. Fridgen taken down. Dubas takes a shot. Glove by Davinder. The rebound is loose in front, but the whistle had already blown. A We're penalty to Northeastern. Felipe's coming off for hooking Danny Fridgen. Felipe dragging Fridgen down, and he's going to go to the box for two. He took Fridgen right down there. There was no question about that call. So with 16-02 remaining in the hockey game, Colgate will be up in a power play. And what an excellent opportunity this will be, Jim. Felipe in the box for the second slam tonight, and he's really upset. He's saying that Fridgen acted that whole thing out. But no doubt about it, Fridgen was taken down right at the blue line. Colgate will have a one-man advantage for two minutes. Steve Smith now in the Husky zone, out to the point to LaPonte, to the corner to Smith. Behind the net for Dubas. David Nur tries to glove it there, but it's still behind him. Northeastern fighting for possession behind the net with Steve Smith. They roll to the corner. Now they're still fighting for possession. Comes loose to Renault at the point. Renault skates into the center of the zone. Back to the point to LaPonte. Across there for Steve Smith. Top of the circle. His shot is blocked. It rolls to the corner to Fridgen. Stares it for LaPonte. Comes out to the point. Colgate can't keep it in. Renault has to come out to center ice now. Renault up to head there for LaPonte into the zone. Steve Smith tied up by Northeastern players. Dumped out to center ice again. A minute 19 left on the power play. LaPonte at center ice winds it around the boards. Jeff Hiltz for Northeastern is there. Before Fridgen, he ties it up along the sideboards and he finally clears it down the length of the ice with just a minute and five seconds remaining on the Colgate power play as Dennis LaPonte will have to come back behind Guy Lamone. 
Raponte sends a long pass for Isomo. It's too far. Oh, a two-line pass call. 15 minutes even remaining in the game. 58 seconds on the power play. Faceoff will come back in the Colgate zone for the icing call. It'll be to the left of goaltender Guy Lamont, and Colgate now really has to get on the ball. They're doing a lot of good checking, especially Mark Morris when uh, Northeastern was sending a couple of men in off the point inside the net. But uh, Colgate really has to keep that puck in the Northeastern end while they have this power play opportunity. This is a very nervous time here at Star League. The crowd really coming to life. This is where it can really help them. 58 seconds left on the power play. The face off to the left of Lamont, Jimmy Wallace will be there. Wallace usually excellent on his face off, having a little off night tonight, though. He wins this one, though, back to Renault. Renault behind his own net, up the sideboard for Mike Gould in his own end. Gould being forechecked nicely there by McDougal. He gets it to Lennox Sterling, still in his own end. Now Chris Renault breaks it out to center ice. Renault with control, breaks over the line. Now he has to turn back as he's forechecked by Northeastern. Renault back at center ice, finally just dumps it into the zone. Northeastern's Jacobs will take it there and send it back out to center ice. Renault will try to start him out again. Here comes Mike Gould over the line. Gould goes to the right corner. Looks to center it for back to the point. Now Lennox Sterling. Quick shot blocked by the defense. It goes high into the corner. McDougal will clear it all the way down to Guy Lamont, who has to stick it aside with 20 seconds left on the power play. Lennox Sterling in his own end now will break out of the zone. Lennox Sterling checked into the boards. He still manages to break into the zone. Mike Gould fighting along the sideboards to keep it in to Isamo now. Stand for all. He's shot back and kicked out by Davender. Good try by Michael. The puck comes loose to the point. Michael is still skating with it. Gets it over to Sterling from the point. A crossover to Reno and fires a shot that goes high. The puck rolls free to the corner. Northeastern will be able to clear it down the length of the ice. Teams return to full strength now. Busey counts Sterling in his own end. Chris Reno will try to clear the Colgate zone. He does get out. Sterling now Reno at the center ice dumps it into the Husky zone. Isamo chases to the corner with Frank. They'll crash into the boys. It comes loose behind the net. Mike Walsh on the other corner will try to keep it alive for Colgate. They tie it up in the corner. Players fall on the puck with 13-33 remaining in the hockey game. Colgate still leads it 4-3. And uh, he's really come on with some unbelievable kick saves in this period and in the second period. A lot of times you see the goalie fall apart, but not tonight. Dennis Laponce in the Husky zone will take the face off for Colgate. Laponce ties up the draw in the corner with the Northeastern player Felipe, they will have to tie it up there, it comes loose though, Walsh fights to keep it alive, the point to Rod Powell, his shot's blocked by the defense, comes all the way out to center ice, and here comes Busick in the center ice zone, sends it back into his own zone to Frank to set up, pass for Busick in center ice, good check by McCowman to knock off the puck, but they're going to call McCowman for a penalty, unbelievable, I don't see how they could call that at all, first of all McCowman was spun around by Busick, and McCowman's coming off the ice for two minutes, and, uh, you know, we're supposed to be the home team. We're supposed to have a little bit of an advantage in this situation. I'll tell you, it looked like just a good clean check there, didn't it, Jim? It sure did. 13-12 left, third period. Colgate up by a goal, 4-3. Well, they're going to give the call to McCalman two minutes for elbowing at 6.48. That's a tough one for Colgate to take now, especially with Northeastern just one goal behind. And they have their big line out there. Now Kai Russo controls the draw, jumps it into the stand, so we'll have to do that one over again at center ice. Four seconds only elapsed on the power play. The safest is... swim time for Colgate now. 13 minutes left. They really have to put a couple more goals on the board because uh, nothing certain Northeastern has really come on in the last period and a half. McDougal wins the draw back to Frank and center ice. Long shot of Lamont off his stick and over the glass. And they'll do it again in this time in the Colgate zone. 13 minutes remaining in the game. A minute 48 on the power play. Colgate still leading it just 4-3 to three now. Jim, you know these Colgate Northeastern games are always the same. They're always wild. No matter what happens in the beginning, it always ends up tight. During the regular season, in power play situations, uh, Northeastern was able to score on 24% uh, of their power play opportunities. Colgate's able to clear the zone this time, though, as they win the draw and dump it down the length of the ice. A minute 38 remaining on the Northeastern power play. They'll set up in their own end. Steve Smith watching his man at center ice. That's the captain, Hiltz. He's at center ice, breaking into the Colgate zone, dumps it behind Lamone. Lennox Sterling in the corner. Who's it to Cowie now? He's in on net. He has to go behind the goal. He tries to center it. Blocked by Fridgen. Beautiful play by Dan Fridgen as Cowie tried to center it. And Fridgen just fell on the puck behind Guy Lamont. Dan Fridgen showing his worth as, a, as an all-around player. He saw that the puck was trickling around behind the net and just slid himself into the boards to cover the puck up. We'll have a face-off to the left of Guy Lamont. 12.32 remaining in regulation time. Steve Smith is the man you'd want to have out on the face-offs. And he's there now. He wins the draw. Guy Lamont has to stick it aside. Kai Ruzer winds it around the boards, but he can't clear the zone. Frank now over to Hills. Drop pass there for Passanato. The shot goes wide. Behind the net is, is Cowie. He tries to center it for Frank. 
But now Dan Finch skates out for Colgate, two on two, he falls down, no call. And it goes into the Husky zone, they'll have to sit up down there again. The play is loose in the Husky zone. The Huskies control, here comes Frank in center ice. Sticked away by Lennox Sterling very nicely. They'll have to start over again in center ice. Penalty coming up against Colgate. 50 seconds remaining on the first penalty now for Northeastern. Here comes Mantrick over the line, he's offside. So we're gonna have a whistle blowing this play dead and we'll have, it looks like Dan Fritchin coming off the ice, Jim. Tough break for Colgate. They'll have two men in the box. 45 seconds left on the penalty to Mitch McCalman. Fridgen will go off two minutes. I do not know exactly what the call will be. And there's all kinds of uh, Northeastern players confronting the officials right now. I don't know what that's all about. They should be happy with two Colgate men in the box. And you know, Jimmy, I hate to see Colgate dig their own hole of all things. Very tough break. Uh, we could not see Fridgen what he did because he was up against our blind side. At 8.03, now Colgate's gonna be down two men for 45 seconds, at which point they'll be down just one man, but this is gonna be a tough situation. They've got Dennis LaPonce, Kai Rusler, and Lennox Sterling. Now Rusler and Sterling have been excellent on their penalty killing, but any two man disadvantage is tough. Now, Mantrick wins the draw. Mantrick top of the circle. Sterling hounds him in the corner, he ties him up momentarily, keeping it alive there very nicely. Now Cowie behind the net. Here comes Mantrick, top of the circle. Back out to the point to Felipe. Felipe across the hill till send it in for Cali. Rebound shot kicked out by Lamone. The puck rolls through the corner out to the point to Hiltz now. Hiltz will look for Felipe. Long shot. Faked it and he tried to hit Mantrick with a pass. It comes into the corner though. Cali behind the Colgate net. Cali looking for a center pass blocked by Laponte. Now we've got five, we've got 10 seconds left. A quick shot goes wide of Lamone by Felipe. One man will be coming out shortly. Felipe shot from the point. The flexion try goes wide. Mantrick now in the corner. One man returns to the ice. Play in front of the net. Lamont sticks to the side. He comes out to the point now to Hills. Hills slides it for Felipe. Felipe looks for the open man. He'll take the shot blocked by the defense. Five on four now. Mantrick behind the Colgate net. Rooster knocks him off the puck. Sends it up the boards. Mantrick controls for Northeastern. Gets it out to the point to Hills. Hills over for Felipe. Back to Hills. He'll take a long shot. He fakes it though. Comes to the top of the circle. Score! Quick shot in front by Mantrick. Kicks out by play by Lamone. Beautiful play by Key. Here comes Laponce. Tripped up. And we're going to have a call. Northeastern will have a man coming off the ice as he tripped up Dennis Laponce. And all hell is breaking loose here at Start Ring. Felipe is going off the ice for two minutes for tripping Laponce. 38 seconds now left in the Colgate power play. And what just moments ago, Guy Lamont looked like he was beaten badly as he was down on his knees. Guy Lamont made beautiful saves. Four on four hockey now for about 38 seconds. Then Colgate will go up by one man. Jerry Cowie comes off the ice for tripping at 9.25 for Northeastern. The faceoff's in the Husky zone. Wilds wins it. Rod Powell the point. Long shot hit the referee. Now in the corner, Kenny Eisenmo falls on the puck with the Northeastern player, Jimmy Wiles comes in to tie it up. Now we're going to have a four and four situation for the next 28 seconds, at which point the Colgate player will return to the ice. That's Fridgen will return to the ice, and they'll have the, Colgate will have the power play for about a minute and a half or so. A minute 30 or so will be uh, the situation. The face off in the Husky zone again, Jimmy Wiles wins it to the point, McCallum's shot deflected in front. He rolls to be in the corner, Northeastern does clear the zone to center right, Mitch McCallum's back there. He sends it ahead for Steve Smith, intercepting Northeastern, can have a break. Here comes Hiltz, his shot, kick out by Lamont, rebound, blocked by Rod Powell. Kenny eyes him up behind and there's Lamont, was taken out of the play. Here comes Jimmy Wallace over the line. Wallace looks to the center and he does, it goes wide. Mitch McCallum now top of the circle, sends it into the zone. Northeastern intercepts in their own end, they should clear it to center ice. They do so, Rod Powell stick checks Frank there. Here comes Fridgen over the line, his shot, thrown by Davener. Rebound try comes into the corner now. Northeastern's able to clear it out to center ice with a minute left on the penalty. Colgate has the power play, five on four for the next minute. In the Colgate zone, Rod Powell now, up the sideboards for Steve Smith. Steve Smith breaks in over the line. He's watched, he centers the pass. Looks for a setting pass for Fridgen. He's steered to the corner. Steve Smith still with the puck as he sets up. Smith still with it there. Finally, what's he gonna do? He sends out the point to Powell. He shoots, kicked out. Rebound try goes wide. Dave Fridgen in the corner. Chris Renault, quick shot from the point. Deflected in front. Now Hills tries to clear the zone. He can't do it. 30 seconds left on the Colgate power play. Here comes Northeastern. Here comes Barringer into the zone. He's taken down by Rod Powell. The puck is behind Guy Lamone now. Chris Renault fighting with Northeastern players for it. The puck is still loose in the Colgate zone. Dan Fritchin finally gets a hold of it. Ten seconds left on the power play. 
Bridging over the line now. Sends the pass for Dupas. Taken away by the defense. Out to the point. Mark Moore shot blocked. Now Chris Renault also at the point. Team's going to come back to full strength in two seconds. The power play is over. The puck comes now behind Guy Lamont. Mark Morris is back there to get it for Colgate. Morris in his own end. He'll try to sit up. Sends it up the sideboards there for Fridge. And his pass for Steve Smith over the line. Now Steve Smith on the sideboards. Tries to center it. It's intercepted by Jacobs, though. And he'll try to clear the zone. He does. He sends it all the way down to the length of the ice. And we could have an icing call, but we don't. It's waved off. Mark Morris behind his own net. Sends a pass for Fridge. And they've been out there a long time. Quick shot by Hills. Blocked in front. Rebound. McDougal backhand has hit the post. Now Beal behind the Colgate net. Sends a pass out to the point to Hills. Fridgen sticks it away from him. Rebound in front now. Goes wide of, of Lamont. Chris Renault finally clears the zone. He sends it down the length of the ice. 7.50 left in the game. Now the play is behind David. Colgate four checking. Walter Dubas behind it. the Husky zone. Players fall down in the crease. And it finally rolls out to center ice where Kai Rusler will send it for Walt Dubas at center ice. Dubas now flips a pass for Laponte into the zone. Laponte lost control to Cowie, though. Cowie in his own end. Now here comes Northeastern out to center ice. Intercepted by Walsh. Here's Dan Fridgen with Walsh over the line. And that play is blown offside. Mike Walsh was offside. Mike Walsh, I was watching him to see if he went. And he had one skate on that blue line. He was not offside. Well, he's upset because he's been blown offside about five times tonight. A very tough break for Mike Walsh and from the Red Raiders. 7.22 left in the hockey game. Colgate leads 4-3. Jim, it's an unbelievable game. As long as you have one skate touching the blue line, you can be leaning over as much as you want in the other direction. Puck's loose in the Husky zone. They dump it out to center ice. Kai Ruzer for Colgate dumps it into the zone. Behind David and Felipe will get there first for Northeastern. Felipe sends it up the sideboards now. Sends it out to center ice. It's dumped into the Colgate zone. Lennox Sterling will get there ahead of Mantrick. They'll fight for the puck in the corner. It's tied up in the Colgate corner. Mantrick comes loose with it. Seven minutes left in the game. Laponte finally comes out with good sockets and Walsh. Laponte will wait at center ice, send a long shot in on there, which goes wide. Mike Walsh there, back to get it in the Husky corner. Walsh looks for a center pass to good sockets and slides right through the crease. Rolls free to the corner now. Felipe for Northeastern is there. He's watched by good sockets. Felipe sends it up the side, boys, to center ice. Here comes Busick, but Rod Powell takes him off the puck. Mantrick tries to get it ahead of Laponte. He can't. Here comes good sockets, one on two. Long shot, glove by Davinder. And it, he sends it behind him to Jacobs. 6.25 left in the game. Jacobs sends it out to center ice. Northeastern with the puck. Breaking it over the line is Mantrick, but he's sticked off the puck. Here comes his try in front. Blocked by the defense. Here comes Mitch McCallman for Colgate. Two on two with Isamo. His pass for Isamo is too far. It goes into the Husky zone. The puck dumped out to center ice. Rod Powell for Kenny Isamo. Two on two in the Husky zone. Isamo centers the pass. It's blocked by the defense. It rolls behind Davidner. Here comes Giovanucci for Northeastern in his own end. He'll break out into the center ice zone. Mitch McCalmo will intercept it from him there. Sends it out to the Husky zone. Craig Frank is there. Dumps it out to center ice. Into the Colgate zone. Finally, Rod Powell in his own end. Sets up with McCalmo and sends it back out to center ice again. Where Jacobs will have to sit up for Northeastern. Frank dumps one into the Colgate zone. But it'll be blown offside. Avril was offside. 5.35 remaining in the hockey game. Colgate leads it 4-3. to three. And now comes nail-biting time. They should call these Colgate players the cardiac kids. They oh. are uh, really putting the fans up on the edge of their seats. Most of them are standing now, and I think they'll remain that way until the end of this contest. This whole week is standing. It's just unbelievable. Colgate clings to a 4-3 lead so many times. Guy Lamont came up big when it counted, and so many times David Nur came up big. Now Steve Smith wins the draw back to Mark Morris at center ice. Sends it in for Dubas. is intercepted. Dubas tries to keep it in. Now here comes Dan Fridgen over the line. It's taken away from him. He's tied up by Northeastern players. The puck loses center ice. Fridgen finally dumps it into the zone. Jacobs will get there before Dubas. Though Dubas ties him up in the Husky corner. And they'll tie it up for a faceoff with 5.17 left in the hockey game. What a game. Let's see now if they keep the puck in the Northeastern zone. We uh, seem to have some wild games elsewhere around the league. There are three tie scores the last we heard. Now in the Northeastern zone, Colgate loses the draw. Col uh, Northeastern player loses a stick. And Mark Morris controls it center ice. Sends a long shot in on David, and he sticks it aside for his defenseman. Hiltz, intercepted by Dubas in front, centering pass. But it's uh, had to come out to the point to Mark Morris. Northeastern finally intercepts it, though Frank will send it out of the zone. As Steve Smith is there, so nice to dump it right back in on David. Now he'll stick it aside. Here comes Craig Frank in the Northeastern zone. Sends out the side punch for Cowie. He flips it out of the zone to center ice, where Avril can't get the handle. Steve Smith for Colgate has it at his own blue line. 
Sends it up the sideboard for Mark Morris, who will look to break into the zone. Morris does. Long shot glove by David from the blue line, and he'll fall on that puck, not wanting to give up a rebound with just four and a half minutes remaining in the hockey game. And it's going to be sub four minutes, 35 seconds left. It is going to be something. It's, uh, it's going to go right down to the wire. And uh, we saw Colgate just a couple of days ago lose one. Of the These two have been going at it all night, Wallace and Busick, as the referee chases. Use the gap for a moment for just a moment as he skates back in now. Now Wallace steps back. Now they're both ready to go. Wallace loses the draw. Big win for Northeastern on that one as they send it out to center ice and they clear their own zone. We'll have an offside call there with four to three. Colgate leading 425. Left in the game. We got a score. Cornell in the third period, midway through, leads Maine by a score of five to four. Another wild game in Division I playoff action. We were talking about this earlier, but in that Clarkson game, it really helps Colgate if Clarkson wins. The puck's loose in the Husky zone. The Huskies control there with 419 left in the game. As it's dumped into the Colgate zone by Busick, Kai Rusler chases it down and gets there before Marshall sends it up the side points for Isomo. It's intercepted, dumped in behind Lamone. Lennox Sterling up the side points for Mike Ull. Ull sends it to center ice now. It's tied up by players along the side points at center ice. They keep it alive. Finally, Mandrick sends it into the Colgate zone. His pass is for Kennedy as he's taken down by Kai Rusler. And Rusler is going to come off the ice, no doubt. He took... He took down Walter Kennedy, Jim. Not a time to get a penalty. You're up by one goal with only three minutes, 54 seconds left. And now these guys are going to be scraping the fight off another power play. That hurts. Colgate has been tough tonight. They were able to fight up front for Colgate. Well, tough. It's going to be a face-off. It's going to be in the Colgate end to the left of Guy Lamont. Colgate's going to be down for two minutes. They lead it only four to three. So let's see what happens. Steve Smith loses the draw. Cowie keeps it at the point, sends it in behind Guy Lamont. He holds it up for Sterling. Sterling up the side boards for Steve Smith. He'll try to clear the zone. Frank tries to keep it in. Smith clears the zone out to center ice. Good play by Steve. Now Hilt for Northeastern. That center ice will set it up there. It's pass for McDougal. McDougal breaks over the line now. He's watched by Steve Smith. McDougal at the top of the circle, tied up, and finally sent out of the zone by Smith. A very nice play. A minute and a half remaining on the Northeastern power play. 324 remaining in the game. Northeastern sets up in their own end. As Frank breaks out into center ice, he sends a pass for McDougal there. McDougal will break in over the line. He's forechecked by Lennox Sterling as they go to the corner with McCalman now. McCalman comes away with the puck by Lamont and he'll clear the zone. Good play by Mitch McCalman, sending it all the way down the length of the ice where David will hold it up there for Hiltz. Hiltz now skating into center ice, looking to break over the line. He does, but he's offside. Marshall is offside, so we'll have another whistle and they'll bring that face off outside the Colgate blue line with a minute three left on the power play. Colgate, they still got the uh, big boys out there, Sandy Beetle. Marshall's going to come off now as Mantra comes on the ice, and Jerry Cowie will stay out. Northeastern taking time to switch up all their players. Frank comes off the ice, and they put Beetle out on the point. That's what they do here. Now it's center ice. Hiltz over for Beetle at the center ice zone. Back to Hills. Hills takes a long shot blocked by Fridgen, and he'll clear it right back out to center ice, but we had a whistle. Uh, before that offside call on, on Northeastern with 52 seconds remaining on the power play. 2.46 is all that's remaining in this hockey game. Colgate, a precarious 4-3 lead. And wins the draw at center ice. Here comes Beetle sending a long shot in behind Lamont. McCowman can't handle it behind his leg. Comes out to the point to Hiltz. Hiltz holds it there, sends it into the corner for Marshall. Let's see what he does with it. He'll take the shot. Save Lamont. The rebound's loose in front. Kicked to the corner by Fridgen. Fridgen sends it out to the point where Hiltz has it. Hiltz for Marshall. Marshall for Beetle. Back to Hiltz. He fires a shot. Goes wide. Cowie behind the net. Centers it for Marshall. Back out to the point. Shot by Beetle. Kicked out Lamone. Cowie on the rebound. Fridgen takes it away from him. And Fridgen clears the zone. What a play by Danny Fridgen. All the way down the length of the ice. Ten seconds left on the Northeastern power play now. Now here comes Northeastern over the line. Here comes Mantrick. Mantrick tied up along the sideboards. It's letting Sterling clears it. All the way down to David, who comes way out of his net. Sends it to center ice for Kai Rusler. Rusler now at center ice. The punch lose a minute 40 left in the game. The punch sit in behind David. The beetle behind his own net. They'll have to set it up. Time's running down. Fridgen intercepts. He scores! Go in! Go! It's over! Danny Fridgen scored it with a minute and a half remaining. Danny Fridgen stole the puck in the Husky zone and he was right in on net and he put it right in behind Davinder. Colgate leads 5-3. to three. What a play. The 
crowd erupts on that play by Dan Fridgen. Exciting action here as Colgate is taking a 5-3 lead. This is the same exact position they were in in February when they had the 5-3 lead with a minute and a half remaining. This time, let's see what happens. Well, the bedlam continues here in Star Ring. The Colgate Raiders 5-3. They lead with a minute 36 exactly remaining in the game. Standing ovation continues. Danny Fridgen unassisted. 18-24 of the third period. Jimmy Wallace's unit is out there for the last minute and 36 seconds. It's just unbelievable the way Colgate has come back to really take a two-to-go lead here. Now they've got to play tough. No. And listen to this crowd. They're screaming, Boston, Boston. That's where we'd be headed tomorrow night if Colgate should hold on to this lead. The yeah, officials sure. now, right now, talking on the ice. They're upset about something. We're uh, waiting to see what they're ruling out. We have not gotten any new scores in in the other ECAC uh, Division I games. Those are being held at court. Let me stick again. And we saw this. This is what started the ball two years ago, Jim. You are. Yes, they're checking the curvature on somebody's stick. Probably on a Fridgen stick. I would think, because he's easy to score that goal. The uh, coach of Northeastern, Fern Flamen, is really upset. He's saying that he's playing with an illegal stick. Well, I'll tell you, in playoff action, I guess you resort to anything. You don't want to. You want to try every angle you can. That goal by Fridgen was unassisted, as I said. A minute 36 remaining in the game. Colgate has a two-to-go lead. Back on the ice now, the officials are bringing out an instrument to measure the curvature of the stick. And if it is proved to be illegal, Colgate will lose that goal. This is a very, very uh, bogus situation, I'd have to say. But you got, you can't blame uh, Northeastern really for trying. The goal stands. The stick remains legal. Colgate leads five to three. And yeah, I'm going to head down to the ice, uh, make my way down to the ice, so we can get our on ice interviews. We can all leave you for the uh, remainder of the third period. Okay, Jimmy. Good luck now as Colgate. The goal is set. Felipe is still arguing. He still does not like whatever the. The curvature on that stick by that stay fridge and stick, but he's not going to win this argument, no way. Right, Dino? You see the crowd's reaction, they don't like it either. And finally, we have a penalty to Northeastern. They send the man off the ice for all this delay, and we'll see what the call is. And it looks like that very man, Felipe, will come off the ice. No, he's on, he's on, as a matter of fact, it won't be Felipe. Of all things, Northeastern could not afford right there is to send a man off the ice for two minutes, and that's just what they're going to have. We'll try to get the official word on that one. As we get another score in the third period, Clarkson is broken ahead of UNH by a score of 3-2. to two. Cornell leads Maine. Now Northeastern into the Colgate zone. They're down a man. Here's Marshall in the Colgate corner. Lennox Sterling behind his own net now. We'll try to clear the zone. He's tied up though. And he finally gets it out to center ice. Here comes Jimmy Wallace over the line. Wallace in on net. His backhander is club by David. Hit the post. It hit the post. Northeastern controls in their own end. A minute 10 left in the game. Northeastern skating up the ice. They're going to have to pull the David in very soon. Lennox Sterling now in his own end. Up the sideboard from Mike Ole. He clears the zone. Northeastern sends it back into the Colgate zone. Just a minute left in the hockey game. Marshall in the Colgate corner will try to tie it up, but Ole keeps it alive. Out to Felipe. His shot goes wide. Comes out to the other point to Jacobs. Now he takes a shot. Sticked out by Lennox Sterling, and it comes out to center ice. And they'll clear it all the way into the Husky zone. Kenny Eisenhower skates down. Almost got a quick shot in on David Nurse. It rolls behind him. They'll tie it up for a face off. 40 seconds left in the hockey game. Northeastern will be a man short for the rest of the game. That's got to hurt them here. As once they clear it out of their own zone, the faceoff will be in the Husky zone. And once they clear it out, they're going to have to look to pull David from the goal. Steve Smith will take it in the Husky zone. 40 seconds left in the hockey game. It's been another wild one. An exciting Division I playoff game. They're all crazy Northeastern and Colgate games all the time. Steve Smith will look to win this draw and hopefully control it for the remainder of this game. As more and more scores pour in, he wins the draw back to Lennox Sterling now. Sterling just dumps it to the corner to kill Ty. Fridgen chases it there. Behind it, had to do a business shot. Stuffed try was 
blocked by David as they cleared out the center ice. Just 27 seconds in the game. Northeastern in their own end, setting up Frank. Almost intercepted by Steve Smith, gets it out to center ice. Walt Dubas has it for Colgate. Just 18 seconds left, Colgate controlling. The crowd comes to their feet, letting Sterling. Colgate's going to win their first playoff game ever. Dan Fidget in his own end, tied up there, gets it for McCommon. Here's the countdown. Colgate's going to win. The puck is loose, and that's it. That's it. Colgate has won it. They have beaten Northeastern for the second time this year. Colgate advances to the semifinals in Boston. Colgate has won their first playoff game in five appearances. The final score, Colgate five, Northeastern three. And we're going to take a timeout, and we're going to be back with a wrap-up. Let's take this 60-second Red Raider timeout. Hey, guess what's happening? All over America, we're working. We're insulating our homes. Caulking. The patient continues here at Star Rink. It's an unbelievable scene. The crowd is loving it. Jim Joyce is on the ice. We're going to go down to Jimbo right now. Here's Jim Joyce. Thank you very much, Rick Klein. We're on the ice here at Star Rink. We're waiting for a couple of KB players to come back on. I talked to Kenny Osimo. They're going to bring back Dan Fridgen and Guy Lamont. I'll be back as soon as they come back on the ice. Back to you. Thank you very much, Jim Joyce. An unbelievable scene. The fans chanting, we're number one. We're headed for Boston. The team leaves for Boston tomorrow night. Now let's remind our listeners, because of tonight's win, tickets for the semifinal and final rounds at Boston Garden on March 13th, that's this Friday and Saturday, will go on sale tomorrow and Thursday at the Huntington Gym Ticket Office. Their price is $7, $6, and $4. The Huntington Ticket Office will be open from 9 to 11 and 12 to 4 p.m. as Colgate has been allotted 1,200 tickets at the Boston Garden, so you can pick them up starting tomorrow. The celebration continues. Jim Joyce hoping to get Guy Lamont and Danny Fridgen. Danny Fridgen got the goal, the fifth goal that put this game away, 5-3. to three. He stole the puck right in front of the Husky net. And he threw it right by Davener, who never had a chance on the play. And right then, I had a feeling it was over, even though there was still a minute and a half in the game. You had to feel that this time Colgate was going to hold on to that lead. The final score, Colgate 5, Northeastern 3. Jim Joyce is still waiting on the ice. The first time ever the Colgate Red Raiders have ever won a playoff game. And it's got to be a big thrill because this opens a whole, whole lot of doors now. But not only does it assure that they go to Boston, it almost assures, not quite, but it almost assures that the Raiders will have a spot in the national quarterfinal playoff round, which starts on March the 20th. The NCAAs. Thank you, Dean Nelson. As the crowd starts to file out, it's been an exciting one. What else would you expect between Colgate and Northeastern? They had a 6-5 to five overtime game on Friday the 13th. And you know, just as the, that game was on Friday, February 13th, the semifinal round is on Friday the 13th of March this time. We have uh, another Friday the 13th due to the leap year situation or whatever. So we'll have another wild night, I guarantee you, this Friday, as we have no idea who Colgate will be playing because the scores of the other games are so close. The, later, the latest scores we have, we had, a, we had quite a few. We had uh, Clarkson and UNH in the third period. Clarkson was leading UNH 3-2. Boston College and Providence were knotted up at one apiece in that game, and Cornell in the third period led Maine by a score of 5-4, to four. so anything can still happen in any of those games. If Boston College were to win, I believe we'd play Boston College on Friday night, but that is definitely not assured right now as Providence has them tied up at one apiece. We're still waiting for the interviews on the ice, hoping to get Danny Fridgen and Guy Lamont. And while we wait, we'll take this 30-second Colgate Red Raider timeout. Second time this year that Colgate has beaten Northeastern. Dean Nelson has just handed me the final shots on goal total. Northeastern 14 shots in that third period, Colgate 12. So Colgate got outshot in the third period, but they didn't give up any goals in the process. So uh, the, fi the final shots on goal for the game we don't have as yet. But Colgate finally winning it five to three. Unbelievable, it's been a night to remember. And uh, don't forget, we will be on the air for each of Colgate's playoffs game. playoff games this weekend. We'll be on the air Friday night now. Colgate's game Friday night will be at 6.15, so our airtime, I assume, will be about 6 o'clock in the evening. So don't just assume it's 7.30 and tune in late and miss half the game. Colgate plays at 6.15 this Friday night. Now, if they uh, make the final round on Saturday, that game is 8 o'clock. If they play in the consolation game Saturday, the game will be at 5 o'clock. So a lot of different things can happen. But the one thing that is definite, Colgate plays in the Boston Garden on Friday, this, Friday the 13th at uh, 6.15 in the evening. The opponent yet to be determined as uh, we're having trouble as the uh, players uh 
Kai Ruser winds it around the boards, but he can't clear the zone. Frank now over to Hills. Drop pass there for Passanaro. His shot goes wide. Behind the net is.